What was the state of the people at the time that Carson went through Canyon du Chien? Carson Carson came to uh, Navajo country and he befriended a lot of Navajos and uh, they were kind of impressed with the way he used to do rope tricks. He was always doing rope tricks and, and they called him the, uh, the man who plays with the rope or the nearest translation I can get to it. Um, he befriended a lot of the Navajos, and, and they, they trusted him. And he was pretty well known. And that was before there was any trouble between the, between the government and the Navajos. I guess before they decided they wanted the land. And then uh, they decided that they wanted the land, and they wanted to get rid of the Navajos. And so I guess he went back to Washington, D.C., and told them that you know, hey, I know the Navajos, I know their, I know the people, I know where they live, and I know a lot about them. And so he was given, you know, so many soldiers, and they told him, well, you can, you're the sign to go out there and, and kill them all, or round them up, or whatever it is, you know, that they had decided at that time. And he was the one that came out. And when the, uh, when our people discovered that it was him, they started saying, well, you know, he's the same guy that we thought was our friend, and they, they hired him to come out and try to kill us all. So they made a decision that he was going to, they were going to kill him. And uh, they said, we might as well kill him because he has no mercy at all whatsoever on our people. So um, she said they had a great battle, a real uh, the biggest battle of all was in, somewhere in the Monument Valley area where a, a lot of our warriors got killed and a lot of their soldiers got killed. When you... When Go right ahead. Yeah, why don't you just repeat the whole thing about Kit Carson, uh, you know, Navajos thought he was a friend. <coughs> well, when Kit Carson first came uh, 
well, when he first became known to the Navajos, he came uh, out and he befriended a lot of them. And uh, they were impressed by the way he could do his rope tricks. He did a lot of rope tricks and, and they began to call him the man who plays with the rope. And that's about the nearest translation I can get to what, to what my mom called him, I, his Navajo name. Um, this was all before there were any trouble between the, the uh, U.S. government and the Navajos. When they decided, when the government, I guess, decided that they wanted the Navajo land and they wanted, they had to get rid of the Navajos, um, Kate Carson, uh, from what our people heard, is that he went back to Washington and told them, well, I know the Navajos, I know them real well, and uh, I think I could probably help with the war effort against them. So he came back and they gave him a bunch of soldiers and he came out. And when our people discovered it, they said, well, we know who it is that's after us now. It's Kit Carson, the man who plays with the rope. He's the one. And a lot of people said that, well, he was my friend. We trusted him. And they were pretty upset about it. And uh, they came to a decision that he would be the one they going to have to kill him. And they decided they would kill him because he, he has no mercy. What they mean, he has no mercy at all. He can go around killing his friends and killing the people he knows and women and children. So they said they were going to try to kill him right away. And from the stories that we get, the biggest battle of all with the uh, soldiers was fought in the Monument Valley area somewhere and they thought that they had killed him there, but uh, nobody was really sure whether they killed him there or not. After he, he entered Canyon du Chez, I think this is the, the part of the book that really got to me, part of your book that really killed themselves. Can, mm -hmm. you tell, can you tell us a little bit about that? What was going on? Why were the people so afraid? They went to this cave. They went to this cave. I don't know. They came in the shade. She put a hot edge, but they went over there and they did she. Yeah, imagination, you see. Carson, she all is So we had a whole lot of imagination. We did, um, we thought she had a whole lot of imagination. She had a lot of imagination, but she had a lot of imagination. I sit at a hot egg with Annie. I sit at a hook on the ground. Got a shin that died the chicken, to be able to go yell. She had out and then give to a yard, your men than chito. But how you could be able to go yet, though I should let the doll talk to the nozzle that bit of the chicken. But the Janja Kajan showed that in the Pachinoshi. So I then kept a little ocean in the Hakitis. Got our warriors in Tachilin, the Tachilin, the Tachilin, the Tachilin, the and <laughs> Come that they say some man is done on a creator. 
When uh, Kit Carson and his soldiers, I he was leading them as they went into Canyon de Chez, the people were pretty much afraid. They didn't want to be killed and they all went up into the cave, a cave somewhere up in there. And they were all hiding out in there when the soldiers attacked them. <coughs> and uh, the warriors, my grandfather was one of the warriors that were there. They got in front of all the, all the other people and were trying to tell the soldiers to stop. Uh, have mercy on us, don't, don't kill our people. But they kept on coming in and shooting and finally they, they just, they counterattacked and they were all fighting there. <clears throat> if you think about it on the terms of a, of a peaceful people living out here that have rarely have contact with other people and this and you know how vast our our territory was then very rarely are you ever going to have them fighting other people or, or or seeing death themselves and when confronted with it right there they were very afraid they were scared they didn't want to get shot by the soldiers and they i i guess they just reached a a point of panic where they started jumping off the cliff, jumping, going out of the out of the cave and jumping off the cliff and killing themselves, saying they didn't want to get shot by the soldiers. They need, they didn't want to get shot by them and they didn't want to be taken prisoner. And so, rather than face either one of those two, they jumped off the cliff and killed themselves. So there was a great battle at that cave, <clears throat> and. Uh, the soldiers didn't quit until there were a lot of bodies, I guess a lot of bodies scattered all over that area. When they finally did, somebody said cease fire and they all backed off. So the main reason that they jumped off the cliffs was because of fear and not, you know, when you're a peaceful um, person who's lived your whole life and never saw a battle before and all of a sudden you're thrown right in the middle and people are trying to kill you. And, you know, you're going to be panicked. Once they surrendered after Kit Carson forced, uh, or a lot of people decided to surrender and they go to Fort Defiance, and of course then there's and a lot of stories have been written and a lot of stories have been told about the long walk. Um, what, did, what did your father tell you about the long walk, <clears throat> the walk to Hualdi? Chu <laughs> Cotted 
The people that didn't go on the long walk, um, what he was saying about them. Manuelito, I guess, suggested at the time that people should stay here. Some of them should still live on the reservation because this is our land. Um, when they began, when the soldiers began trying to um, annihilate all the Navajos on the reservation within our, within our country, they realized they couldn't kill them all because of um, the country. It's just too hard. There's too many places to hide. There's too many. Just, just the way the land is set up, it's, you know, they, they decided they couldn't get them all. So they, they had um, messengers go out and tell the people, well, we're going to give you free food because they had burned all their crops and everything. And they said, we'll give you free food if you'll come in, give yourselves up. So a lot of our people did that. They said, well, you know, let's go. Let's go, we, at least we can eat, because a lot of our people were starving at the time. Um, as with any society, you're going to have a, a, a group of people that, that can't spend for themselves. Uh, some of the elderly, some of the people that, that had a lot of kids, that have children, that were starving, and they were having a hard time. There's uh, very little game for them. So they had a hard time surviving, so they decided, well, let's go in and, and get some of this free food they're talking about. And that was how they lured a lot of people into Fort Defiance. Um, Emanuelito said, well, let those people go. Maybe they can get, you know, get something to eat. They need to um, think about themselves. But for us, he was talking about himself, the warriors, and, and the other people that, that wanted to stay. He said, we'll continue to fight. He says, if they want to come after me, let them come after me. I'm not going to die in some other land. If my blood has to flow, I want it to flow on my own land. This is where, they, if they want to kill me, they can kill me in my own land, but I'll never surrender. And that was why the warriors really stuck by him. And a lot of the people did the same thing. They they came out and they went into these areas like here in Navajo Mountain and hid out and, and managed to survive. And they said, well, this is our land. We're not going to give it up completely, no matter what they do to us. So they managed to hang on to it. What was life like for for the Manuelito and your... What do you think... What for the, for the people that were here, not at Fort Sumner, knowing that their relatives were suffering so much? Oh,就是咱们那些可可的那种那个，可以，可以，可以，可以，可以，可以，可以，可以，可以，可以，可以，可以，可以，可以，可以，可以，可以，可以，可以，可以，可以，可以，可以，可以，可以，可以，可以，
<clears throat> the people that didn't go on the long walk, um, mostly what we, what we uh, have in the history is, is that they, the people who went on the long walk suffered a great deal. And it's true that a lot of them died walking over there and on the way to there and while they were there for four years. But the people who didn't go on the long walk that, that hid out up here in this area and other areas wherever they could hide out, they also suffered. It's, it's really difficult to uh, go out and hunt for food when you're hiding out. And so the people that lived up here really, or that were hiding out up here really suffered also. And they went through really hard times. But Manuelito was a pretty smart man when his people were going on the long walk. He assigned some warriors and the, the ones that he felt were real strong and brave, the strongest and the brave ones. He told them, he says, I want you to go with the people. You go along with them and talk to them and keep their strength up. And that was one of the things he did along with, there was some, uh, we really don't have, in our, our tribal system, we really don't have a, a sole chief. Um, it's more of what's been interpreted as a headman, which is kind of like a leader of a clan or a group. Mm -hmm. um, he sent some of those along with the people also. He said, you should go along with them talk to them, keep their strength up, and, and counsel with them and protect them. So he sent some of his people with them, with the people on the long walk. And, you know, we think back on it, the pe our warriors back then, the, the men, the older men, were really super brave and super strong. And because all of the other people looked up and they had a lot of weight on their shoulders and they had to be strong to keep the people strong to help their people out talk to them and keep their strength up keep them brave and talk to them so there's a lot of strength and bravery in our history with all these people like Manuelito and <coughs> there's a whole host of people that were warriors back then that took care of our people, along with my grandfather. 
he became a group, a leader of a group of about 50 to 60 people he had to take care of. And he was the head with, uh, I guess he called him the head warrior with along with, with about eight or 10 other warriors that were, that were under him to try to help people, these other people and take care of them and feed them and everything and help them keep their strength up. And he was only 16 or 17 when he started that. So he must have been a very extremely brave man and real smart in order to bring the people, bring his people that he was responsible for to bring them through. <coughs> That's one of the reasons that uh, <coughs> mom said she wrote the book is because um, very little is known about that, how brave they were actually were, what they had to suffer through. And that you get responsible for so many people, you know, even 10 or 12 people, it, it can be difficult. But when you're in, in charge of the lives of 50 to 60 people, it's, it's a lot more harder and it's a real strain on yourself. It can be a real strain. How much did did your father, how much did Big Horse and the other people rely on their spirituality? Here, so many of their people had been sent away, and for all the, for all they knew, they may never see them again. They may, you know, they may never come back. I think there was a good chance that they were never going to come back again. Was this a real test of the people's spirituality, and and how important was that into keeping? the people who didn't go to, to Fort Sumner, keeping them alive? Um, that time she, uh, got the care of her own, she, prayer, she, they want to kind of so to them, that they should be in her. I don't believe, believe, great, I never hold nothing, but I don't. ここがたちか、ひんあたそとのんたちりんすごい。こうしんやってはあてんひてねんとかやってはん。んはんとかたちのしん。おたそとのんたちりんでじゅん。おたそのえとおたけたたんたんでじゅん。えてぺたはつけ
were never eaten without praying first. And each, every, each and every prayer always mentioned your family and relatives and, and people who were over there um, that had gone on the long walk and they thought about them constantly. They would go, the elders in the tribe would go up here to the top of Navajo Mountain and pray up there for their safe return and, and praying to the Great Spirit to keep them safe so that they could return to them when it, when and whenever this thing was over with. So it was a really important part, and that's what pulled our people through, um, praying constantly to God and, and praying for their people to return safely. Um, I guess after it was over with, when they sent them on back home, they, some of the people got too tired. They couldn't make it all the way back. So they, they just stopped wherever they were and, and started living there. As she was saying around Santa Fe and Albuquerque and places like that where they just, those people never returned. I don't know, they eventually married into the other tribes and things like that. Um, also, when they were praying to Mother Earth, it's like she, Mother Earth helped us helped our people survive. When they would plant things out here, for those four years that they were in hiding, things always grew real good. And they always had a good harvest. But over there in, uh, where they were camped at Bosque Redondo, they planted things three years in a row and nothing would grow over there. They said it just wouldn't grow. They tried and tried and couldn't get nothing to grow over there. So they, we feel, our people feel that it was the Mother Earth that also helped us survive out here. The people that were hiding out here grew things and they seemed to grow real good. In the book, it, your father just... Yes, <coughs> Chutre <laughs> あ、あ、この
When they, I guess they kind of got in a hurry there. They they were telling them that they were going to sign the treaty and that they could go home. And the people there got anxious to come back. And the the warriors that had been taking care of them told them, you know, take it easy, you don't don't get in a rush, you know, it'll happen. Just just be patient. And when they finally did get the treaty signed and then they told them they could go home, Manuelito sent warriors from here and, and told them, you know, tell the people to, to take it slow. Only go as fast as the uh, elders, elderly people can go. Take their pace. Don't try to get in a hurry because we don't want anybody getting hurt on the way home. We're getting left behind. So. They started coming back and they, they were, you know, even then people were getting in a rush to get back home. They wanted to hurry up and be back within the, in their own land. And there was a lady, an old, an old elderly lady that, when she saw the top of, uh, Taylor. Mount Taylor, she saw the tip of it. And she says, well, I'm home now, I'm back. We're back in our own land, there's our mountain one of our mountains and I guess she just kind of lost consciousness right there. And so they all camped there for three days. They camped right there and she she died right there and they, they buried her there. And uh, it was kind of sad. It's the, one of the sad stories in the book because she was so anxious to get home. I guess she, she pushed herself too hard to get back home. She was so anxious to see her own own land and when she did, that's what eventually she just wore herself out. And Manuelito tried to tell him, you know, take it easy, take your time. When you were being herded over there, you had guns on your back and, you, and people pushing you and prodding you. Now you just take your own time and get back and you'll make it home safely. So they had a real hard time, you know, kind of restraining the people and and we got to wait for the elderly people and let's take our time so they marched at their pace rather than all taking off. Mm -hmm. well, I guess you can't blame them for being so anxious oh, to no. get back. I mean, boy, I think. You know, they... Oh so, yeah, that's right. So a lot of people go there to see that. It'd be great if, you know, they, they go there and then there's this other, they, they, they learn about this other part of this. Mm -hmm. Um, some <laughs> Last 
ਲੱਗਾਂ ਨਾ ਛੁੱਲਣ ਦੀ ਮਦਦ ਨਹੀਂ ਕੀਤੀ ਆ ਤਾਂ ਇਹ ਖਤੀ ਕਹੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਤਾਂ ਚੇ ਤਾਂ ਚਿਸ ਉਹਦਾ ਤਾਂ ਚੁੱਤਾ ਆ ਇਹ ਤਾਂ ਇਹ ਦਾਤ ਜ਼ਲੋ ਸਤੋ ਦਾਤ ਜ਼ਲਾ ਇਹ ਹੋਤਾ ਹੋਤਾ ਇਹ ਤਾਂ ਵਲਾ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਖਤਕ ਅਤਾ ਇਹ ਹੁਣ ਸੋ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਹੀ ਹੰਦੇ ਇਹ ਲੇ ਹੋਇਲ ਤੇ ਤਨ ਤਾਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਤਾਂ ਸ਼ੁਕ ਖਤਾ ਇਹ ਤਾਂ ਅਤ ਬਹਤਾ ਇਸ ਸੀਜਨ ਫਿਸ ਸ਼ੀ ਦੀ ਸਾਨ ਲਿਆ ਕੇ ਖੁਦਾ ਬੋਡੀ ਲਾਂਦਾ ਲੈ ਆ ਤੋ ਬਲਾ ਹੋ ਇਨ ਤਾ ਨੇ ਤੋ ਲੈ ਇਹ ਤੋ ਤਾ ਤਾ ਤੋ ਅੰਜੂ ਆ ਤੋ ਤੇ ਇਸ ਚੰਨ ਤੋ ਅਲਤਾ ਚੰਨ ਤੋ ਅੰਸੀ ਕੀ ਤੋ ਜੋ ਇਹ ਤੋ ਆ ਤੇ ਬੇਲਾ ਤਾ ਅਜ਼ਲੀ ਚੰਨ ਕੋਈ ਤੋ ਨੇ ਨਾ ਇਹ ਆ ਖੁਦ ਆ ਸ਼ੀ ਸੋ ਇਨ ਫੋਰ ਇਨ ਸ਼ੀ ਸ਼ੀ ਜੋ ਇਨ ਨਾ ਸ਼ੀ ਐਲ ਤੇ ਸ਼ੀ ਤੋ ਬਿਸਤਾ ਲੇ ਫੇਲ ਤੇ ਤੇ ਤਾਲ ਨੇ ਇਤਨਾ ਨਾ ਦੋਏ ਅਸ਼ੋ ਤਾਂ ਲੰਨਾ ਲੇ ਤੋ ਨਾ ਖੇਲੇ ਨਾ ਖਾਤਾ ਹਲ ਨਾ ਤੋ ਤੋ ਦੋ ਸ਼ਸ਼ਮ ਕੋ ਕਿ ਤਸ਼ੀ ਥੀ ਨਾ ਖਾਤਾ ਹਲ ਨਾ ਦੇ ਜਨਾ ਖੋਤੀ ਉਸ ਤਾਂ ਲੰਨੀ ਇਦਾ ਖੁੰਨਾ ਤਾਂ ਹੈ ਤੋ ਨਹੀਂ ਤੋ ਉਹਦੇ ਤਾਂ ਅੰਨੀ ਖੁਤ ਆ ਤੋ ਸ਼ੰ ਤੋ ਖੇਨਾ ਹੈ ਤੋ ਸ਼ੰ ਤਾਲ ਨੇ ਦੋ ਹਾਈ ਤੋ ਲੈ ਇਤਿਸ ਤਾਸ਼ ਤੋ ਨਿਸ਼ ਵਾਦਨ ਸੇ ਨੋ ਯੋ ਹੁਈਏ ਲਾ ਨੋ ਇਲਤੀ ਹੋ ਤੋ ਕਾਵਨ ਸਸ ਕੇ ਜੇ ਬਤਾ ਅੰਦੇ ਚਲਮਨ ਹੈ ਲੇ ਉਹ ਹੈ ਜਿਸ ਅੰਦਰ ਲਤਾ ਜੇ ਇਨਸ਼ਨ ਸਤੀ ਉਹ ਆਦਪਨ ਸਾ ਕੇ ਸੋ ਤਾਲੇ ਇਤਨ ਨੋ ਜੇ ਬਨਾ ਇਹ ਸੋ ਫੋਰਨ ਹਲਨ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਬਸ ਕਿਤਲਾ ਅਲਦ ਦਾ ਲੌਂਗ ਵਾਕ ਇਟਸ ਨਾਟ ਸੋ ਮਚ ਦੈਟ ਦਾ ਲੌਂਗ ਵਾਕ ਇਟਸੈਲਫ ਵਾਸ ਦੀ ਪਿਵਟਬਲ ਪਿਵਟ ਪਿਵਟ ਪਿਵਟਲ ਪਿਵਟਲ ਆ ਕੈਨ ਸੇ ਦੈਟ ਵਰਡ ਪੁਆਇੰਟ ਇਨ ਆਰ ਹਿਸਟਰੀ ਐਸ ਮਚ ਐਸ ਦੀ ਰਿਜ਼ਲਟ ਆਫ ਇਟ ਵਿਚ ਵਾਸ ਦੀ ਟ੍ਰੀਟੀ ਦੈਟ ਵਾਸ ਸਾਈਨਡ um the reason it's so important to us in terms of of what happened at that time was is that they tried to take our land they tried to take our land and they were not success, successful um that's one reason we look at it from that from that point of view thinking well they tried and they couldn't do it over the years they've managed to whittle it down some um it's nowhere near the land that we used to roam and 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 in the treaty that we signed with them in 1868 they drew the boundary lines and said now you guys will stay within this boundary line in these what we have marked for you on this map and uh our people held to that we stayed within what what they told us to because they gave us back our land they, you know they couldn't take it from us and that's one of the main important things that uh we see that we did suffer the long walk and we still survived it and uh their attempt at Navajo genocide didn't work and we're still here and we're still strong and uh so that's the main thing that we look at the other things are uh my grandfather he, after the treaty was signed even at that time he said he he advocated education um my mom here got placed in in the uh boarding school and that was one of the one of the uh agreements within the treaty that the tribe signed is that we would place our children in school and so it was one of the important things that he said it's important for you to get an education it's what he told her it's important for you to get an education we uh negotiated this treaty with the US government and we had a Mexican guy interpreting for us and he says that 
it d didn't work very good. They uh, took a lot of things away from us and made us subject to them because we couldn't understand them. And we needed someone who could speak Navajo as well as English and be an interpreter for us to represent our interests. So he advocated in, uh, education even back then in 1868 before, you know, any other people had really realized what an education meant. So that was the reason she got placed in school. And she said even, you know, during that time, uh, um, she suffered a lot just being placed in, in the boarding school. And she said it was really hard and she spent a lot of lonely time, lonely times in the school because it was away from her home and, and uh, being amongst strangers. You know, this, my last question is uh, one thing that, that your father said was that he had a feel like that too. Do you feel like that's the way you, you, why do you feel it's so important to tell these stories? ตัวเล็กๆตัวเล็กๆตัวเล็กๆตัวเล็กๆตัวเล็กๆตัวเล็กๆตัวเล็กๆตัวเล็กๆตัวเล็กๆตัวเล็กๆตัวเล็กๆ
right now all we have is uh, a written history that the uh, white people or the Anglos have written. That's all written down in history books. It's a, from their point of view. When they went out and, and killed women and children and, and people that were just living and never fought back, they didn't know what was going on. When they went out and killed them, it was a victory to them. Uh, one of the things that grandfather said was, we never went out and killed women. We never went out and killed children. All we ever killed was men, soldiers. And when they went out and killed soldiers, then it was a massacre, you know. And it, it's a point of view from their point of view. Is, it's what's written in all the history books. And he thought that our side should be told. And that was the reason that he told his children. <clears throat> he also felt that uh, the, uh, it was important for uh, the warriors to be, to be recognized eventually through all of this, through these stories and, and trying to get out the truth. Uh, my mom was saying that they're, uh, the Navajo warriors like my grandfather who fought for this land, they're never recognized as veterans. And to us, they are our veterans. They fought for our land just like uh, now we have Navajo that have gone to Vietnam and we say they're warriors, they're veterans, and they fought to preserve our liberty, and which is the same thing that our people did. We, are, we consider ourselves a sovereign nation, and we fought against a foreign nation, which was the United States when they came and invaded our land. They fought and died, and they were veterans, and they fought to preserve our liberty and our land, but they're not recognized. We don't, we don't have any type of uh, Navajo Warriors Day or something like that, you know, to recognize the veterans that fought for our land, even within our tribe. And, and she feels it's important that we get out these stories and get out the truth so that maybe we can recognize those people that died fighting for our land and keeping our land, preserving our way of life. I don't have any more questions. Is there anything else that uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> she just kind of uh, wanted to reiterate a little bit on, on how our tribe seems to have forgotten um, the fact that so many people died to preserve the land. So many warriors have died trying to keep our, our liberty. We have people living out here that are free to live, almost free to live wherever they want to. They do whatever they want to. Um, they're happy <coughs> with their existence. <laughs> and uh, they forget, and some of them don't even know that our people fought for the land. And uh, we have people who are elected to tribal office in, in Winter Rock, our chairmen, who now now we call him president of our tribe. We've had so many of them, none of them have ever said, you know, hey, we should recognize all the warriors that have fought and died for to keep our land, preserve our freedom. Not a single one of them has ever 
have, have ever mentioned anything like that. And she said she has thought a lot about how the, how can we get people to recognize that is something that is forgotten within our tribe. How can we get people to remember those people? How can we, what can we do to honor them? Um, how can we get children to learn the fact that so many of our people died to keep their land, the land that they're now living on? And uh, she's said sometimes she sits and cries. It's something that'll that'll make you cry, make you make you feel really sad when you if you've been sitting there and listening to these stories of what happened when they were on the long walk towards uh is what we call it, the Bosque Redondo. There were women that were pregnant and they couldn't they were about to have their babies, and the soldier just shot them, killed them. And if, if, if an, another person tried to help them, they would shoot him or her. And uh, those kinds of people should be remembered somehow. Uh, when I was talking earlier about they, they offered them free food, and they got there, and they, they gave them rancid pork. And they didn't know anything about pork. They'd never eaten pork, and they ate it. They got sick. When they got sick and they couldn't march, the soldiers were just laughing and having a good time and beating them with the butts of their rifles until they killed them. We should have some way of remembering those people and remembering the people that were out here. We had, should have some way of remembering our warriors that fought to preserve, to keep all that killing from happening. But so far, we don't, we don't have anything. And that's what she's trying to emphasize, not only with the book, but by telling these stories and, and things that she remembers my grandfather telling her about. So that these type of things won't continue to go on or ever happen again. Yeah, well, you hope we learn from history, I guess.